Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, today I'm going to be talking about something called method overloading. Uh, and what method overloading is, is it's a feature you may have seen before. Um, excuse me when I talk about this, I'm opening something up. But uh, it's a feature you've seen most likely before. Uh, and what it does is it basically um, allows you to create a method um, uh, multiple times. So for example, you could create a method uh, called jump and you could have jump have a parameter x um, but then you could also create another method named jump and that could have a parameter of x and y. Um, so to describe that because I feel like it's always better to show by example rather than just spewing words out I'm going to create um, a math class uh, and I am going to or a math object and I'm going to show you um, how this works. So inside our math object, we are going to do or create three different methods. Um, the first method is um, going to be called add. Uh, in fact, they're all going to be called add. Um, and what the first one does specifically is it adds two uh, integers. So let's do that. So let's create public int add, and it will uh, accept one I uh, know two integers, so it'll accept int x and it will accept int y. So there you go. Um, and basically, it's very simple. We're just going to return x plus y, right? Wasn't so hard. Now, we are going to create another method named add. So we'll start just by typing the last one public int add. Now, you may be saying to yourself, okay, look, you are crazy. It is impossible to create two methods with the same exact name. How would Java know how to differentiate the two? Well, here's what's exciting about that. The thing is, is you can pass in a uh, different amount of parameters or a different return type, and it will work just the same. So if I pass int as an array, int x, um, I can do this. So what this method is going to do is it's going to take the array passed, so int array x, and it's going to add up every single value inside that array. So if I make a for loop, uh, not before creating a, kind of a dummy variable, um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to create a dummy variable named total, we'll set it equal to zero, um, and if you know, you know, obviously simple algebra, you know that if you want to add up every number in a collection, all you do is just add it to the last one. So we're going to create a for loop to loop through every single index inside our x array. So we'll do for int i equals zero i until i is, um, excuse me, while i is less than x dot length, we will do i plus plus. All right. So what this is basically saying is it's saying I want you to loop through every single index inside this int x array. Simple enough. So what we're going to do in here is we are going to set total equal to total plus x. So the way we do that is we type total plus equals x. Now I'm sure you've seen the plus equals operator before. Um, and what plus equals basically means is it's a simpler way of typing plus um, total equals total plus x, right? So um, I explained that in the beginner tutorials, but you know here we go again, right? So instead of equals, we'll do plus equals, and we will set it equal to um, x. But since x is an array, this won't exactly work. We have to say x, and then we have to pass the index that we're looking for. So specifically, we're looking for i, right? Because we're adding up every single uh, piece in the array. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to take that total and we're going to simply return it, right? So what we've done in this method is we have uh, uh, an integer total and we are adding up every single index inside of our x array and then we are simply returning it. So it's basically saying, like, if you had um, the values 1, 3, and 2, it would go um, 1 plus 3, which is 4, plus 2, which is 6, right? And that's how it would work. Um, okay, 
So then we will make our final uh, method, and that's going to be public double, um, and it will be named add, and we will pass a double x and a double y. Now, um, if we return x plus y, right, you'll notice that um, there's absolutely no errors in this entire file, and that's correct. This uh, will work 100% correctly. So the power of um, of method overloading comes from the fact that you don't need to rewrite the method name over and over and over again. Like how tedious would it be if you had to write public um, add to numbers, and then you had to make another one that was like um, add array values, and then another one that was like add double values, you know, like that would be tedious, it would take up time, and it just looks generally ugly, and it's hard to sift through when you're looking for the perfect method. Um, but when it comes to actually using it, it's actually very simple. So inside my main method, I'm going to create a math object by typing math, uh, I'll name this variable or object m, and I will set it equal to a new math object in order to instantiate it or assign memory to the object. So then, if I press M and dot, if you know, assuming you're using Eclipse, um, you'll see that all three of my methods come up. So what Eclipse is doing right now is it's giving me template proposals. So it's giving me options. Um, it's saying, would you like to use uh, the array adding method, adding to double variables, or adding to int variables? Um, now you don't see. Well, I mean, excuse me. The great thing about this is that these uh, add methods don't. We don't have to worry about um, the long names and the having to search through this entire template to find the right name if you had a huge class, right? So that's really where the power of um, method overloading comes in. And since we did all that work, I think we should at least just print out at least one of these guys. So I'm going to use the array one. So I'm going to print to the console. Um, and I will just print first the text, uh, my um, adding, a colon, a plus, and I will type m dot add. And what this is expecting is, well, at least in this case, we could actually pass in 2, 3, um, and that would work 2, or really any number. However, um, in this case, we're going to pass uh, an array. Now, to create an array, we could um, just simply type new int, and then we're going to put our brackets, and we'll pass, um, let's say, three, like four numbers. So one, four, five, and 18. All right. So what this is going to do is it will take uh, one, four, five, and 18, and add them all together, and then print them to the console. So let's check that out. Let's give it a second to compile, and if we pull up our console window, you'll see that it says my adding, and it used our m.add method, and uh, took our past variable, which was an integer array, and it printed out the added values. So if we go check that out here. That's basically how it worked, and I don't think I need to go through the process of re-explaining how this method works, because I've already done that. Um, but yeah, so that's basically what method overloading is. Um, I would suggest if you have methods that are extremely similar, they just need you know a couple of different parameters here and there, I would definitely suggest method overloading because it's very powerful uh, and it makes your code cleaner uh, and definitely more organized in a production setting uh, and those huge, huge projects. So uh, that's basically it for this tutorial, uh, but I will see you in the next one.